Hello everyone, and welcome back to another session of Bloodborne PvP and another weapon showcase. This time I am using the Whirligig Saw, which has quickly become one of my favorite weapons for doing any sort of farming in the game. Whether it's farming for bloodstone chunks or going for new blood gems, this is one of my go-tos now. And it's a really good weapon and really fun to use. So, more on that later, let's get started with the basics. The Whirly Gig Saw requires 18 strength and 12 skill in order to wield. It has an S scaling in strength, a D scaling in skill, and a B scaling in arcane. The physical base damage of the weapon is 190, and for me the attack rating is about 650 with average blood gems like normal. So, this weapon is just pretty awesome in general, to say the very least. With that L2 attack that it's got in the second form, you can shred opponents, enemies, whether they're players or if it's PvE, it doesn't matter. PvE it's a little easier to shred things apart with, but you know, it is what it is. So let's get started talking about the first form. The first form R1 attacks are medium speed horizontal sweeps followed by a stab, and that stab actually has a decent amount of range. It can catch people off guard too when you go through a few slashing like sweep attacks and then follow it up with that stab. It just doesn't seem like it'll fit with the rest of the move set based on how it appears. So we've got that. Also it's running R1 attack is also a thrust and that comes out quickly and like the fourth R1 has a good amount of range. You also slide in a little bit when you're doing it so that's even better. The R2s are going to be slower speed overhead R2s, and when you charge your attack, it's going to be a very wide, strong sweep with a heavy stagger. So that's really good if you go unlocked ever, and you have someone who's strafing sideways, dodging sideways, and, you know, going through that sort of motion. If you're unlocked, you can easily, easily turn towards them and get them if you get that fully charged R2 off. The transform attack from this form to the second form, is a slash that moves from left to right, and it starts directly behind you, and that's where the hitbox starts. And it moves forward, just right of center. So you've got a pretty wide angled, or not a wide angled, but you know, a wide slash. It is angled, for the record, it is angled. But that's not necessarily a good thing because it gets to the highest point of the swing up front, and like I said, just right of center. And that can actually cause it to not hit, because it's got a little bit of a blind spot on that side. So, it is what it is. Other than that, every attack in this form, in the first form, has a really good stagger and is going to deal a fair bit of damage. But the second form is where this weapon really just shines. So, the secondary form. It's R1 attacks, R3, or our horizontal slashing, two horizontal slashes followed by a thrusting attack, and then an overhead slash. That sort of just comes down overhead chop style. Um, the first two, they're a bit short range, and they're all a tad bit slow. They're not gonna be you know, the fastest attacks ever, considering this weapon is more like a great hammer than anything else in this form. But even still, it's a very nice weapon to have, and it can do some pretty good stuff, so. Um, other things about this form, the transform attack going out of this form into the first form is very short range, but it has an amazingly heavy stagger, and it actually hits two times. So the first hit won't deal that much damage, the majority of the damage will come from the second hit. So that's a good thing, in a way, because even still, even if you miss with the first or miss with the second, you're still going to get a good heavy stagger on your opponent. Always a good thing. The uncharged R2, it's going to be a wide slash from left to right with a slow recovery. It sort of looks like it grinds a little bit when it gets to the end of the swing, and it might. I never actually was able to get someone to stand right there and test out if it does grind them like the charged R2 attack does, but it very well might, based on how it looks. So, speaking of the charged R2, it's an overhead swinging pancake that has multiple hits and, like I said, grinds your opponent. Very powerful, very damaging very, very, very satisfying to land a hit with. But it's not nearly as satisfying as that L2. So the L2 attack, it's as fast as the two-handed R1, so it, it's not overly slow, but it's not overly fast. 
It's weak, but it's got a good stagger. And the reason I say it's weak is because individually the hits that it has are weak, but it hits very frequently after it's already out, and those hits build up very fast. A lot of people will continually try to dodge towards you or around you, and with that you can actually hold the L2 and walk them down. Just walk them back into a corner, walk them back into a tight spot, and it doesn't work too well for them. Let me tell you, it does not work too well for them at all. Especially if you're able to interrupt some of their attacks while you're doing it, because your attack is constantly going. It's a very easy thing to do. So, that's good. Now, that attack, like I've been saying, is one of the main reasons why I actually like this thing in PvE. When you're doing farming, especially for bloodstone chunks, you can just pick up this weapon, walk up to some werewolves, hold that L2 and walk them down, they'll just die. And you have the bonus against that enemy type as well because of, you know, the way this weapon is with the serrated bonus. So, it's all good. It's just really, really good. So it is what it is, you know? Hard to complain about. Except, there are a few things I do have to complain about. So, <laughs> as far as the cons of this weapon, I would say that speed is definitely a concern, but the damage does make up for it in a way. Um, there's also no transform attack after the L2. Most weapons that have an L2 attack, you're able to do a transform after the L2. This weapon, that's not the case because the L2 is one that you can hold. Makes sense. It makes complete sense, in all honesty. But the worst thing about this weapon is the fact that there are blind spots on a good number of attacks. So, you're running first form R2, you're, uh, not the first form, sorry, you're running second form R2. Uh, your second form backstep R1, there's a slight angle on the first form R1 attack, that makes for a slight blind spot. It's not really a blind spot, it's more of a funky hitbox on that one in my experience, but either way, there are still some issues and you can't always rely on this weapon 100% of the time. So, it is what it is. Now, as far as any basic, you know, combos or strats with this weapon, any attack followed by a second form L2 will be awesome because, as I've said, you can just walk towards them, walk them down, back them into a corner, be aggressive with it, keeps the pressure on, works really well. One of my favorite ones that I do, actually, is a one-handed transform attack followed by a two-handed jump attack. And then with the stamina I have left, I'll hold the out to do and just walk them down. The reason I like that combo is because after you do a few one-handed mode attacks, they get used to your short range. And going with that transform attack into the jump attack, you have a massive range increase. And that can throw people off. And you'll also close the gap if you do manage to hit them with your jump attack. If you do close the gap, you'll be in a good position to do that L2. Always a good thing. A good combo for if you're in a tight spot, actually, would be from your second form R1. You do that, followed by a transform attack, then go to a backstep R1. Really, really awesome attack. Good short range combo, comes out decently fast. Very easy to hit with if you're unlocked, for the record. But otherwise, those are really all the tips I've got for this weapon, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it helpful in one way or another. The next weapon showcase will be the Amygdalan Arm, so if you're interested in that, well, keep your eyes tuned to the channel, guys. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next time.